Madrid is a modern city that gives you a taste of the real Spain. It is full of energy and has a lot of cultural attractions. Wide streets are full of cars, but beautiful parks break up the sprawling city. Madrid is the capital city of Spain. It has a lot of interesting historical sites, art museums, and public gardens and plazas. In this video, we'll show you the 10 best places to go and things to do in Madrid, Spain. But before we start the countdown, if you haven't already, please think about subscribing to our YouTube channel. So let's start. 1. Museo Nacional del Prado The Museo Nacional del Prado is one of the best museums in the world. It has more than 8,000 paintings and 700 sculptures. It has a huge collection of art, including many masterpieces and paintings that are as well known as the most famous pieces in the Louvre Museum in Paris. Around 2,300 pieces from the museum's collection are shown in more than 100 rooms on three floors. It can be overwhelming to try to see everything in one trip, but you can focus on a set of masterpieces. The Prado has routes, which are self-guided tours of certain works. Most of the paintings are from Spain and date from the 12th century to the early 19th century. There are a total of 140 paintings by Francisco de Goya in the collection of his work. Las Meninas, Velázquez's 1656 painting of the Spanish royal family of Felipe IV, is also not to be missed. It shows the women of the family. 2. Real Jardín Botánico Tourists can relax in the Real Jardín Botánico, Royal Botanical Garden, which is next to the Prado Museum and has a collection of plants. This lovely green space has shaded paths, benches, sculptures, greenhouses, a kitchen garden with vegetables, and a rose garden that blooms in May and early June. The Museum of Natural History is also in the Real Jardín Botánico. The popular Restaurante Triciclo, 28 Calle Santa Mara, is about 10 minutes walk from the Real Jardín Botánico. It serves lunch and dinner in a modern dining room with a relaxed atmosphere. The restaurant specializes in international food made with gastronomic flair from seasonal market ingredients. 3. Buen Retiro Park and the Crystal Palace In the middle of Madrid, the Buen Retiro Park, Parque del Retiro, is an oasis of peace. This lush, well-kept park is a great place to get away from the noise and chaos of the city. The park is bigger than 125 hectares and has more than 15,000 trees for shade. Built in the 17th century for the Count Duke of Olivares, the historic park has an elegant feel, thanks to its many gardens and paths lined with trees. Before the 19th century, the Parque del Rey Tiro was owned by the Spanish royal family. Since then, it has been a public park. Visitors can get to the pool in the middle of the park from the main entrance at Plaza de Independencia. From here, paths lead to the beautiful La Rosalita, Rose Garden, the formal French Jardin de Don Cecilio, and the Jardines de Cecilio Rodgers, which have an Andalusian style. 4. Royal Palace and Gardens This huge palace is like the Spanish version of Versailles. It is a royal court that was built to impress. But unlike Versailles, which is now just a museum, the Royal Palace of Madrid, Palacio Real de Madrid, is still the official home of a monarch, the King of Spain, and is still used for official state events. In the 1800s, Philip V asked for the palace to be built. All of the granite and white colmenar stone that make up the neoclassical facade make it look very magnificent. The ionic columns and Doric pilasters on the front of the building are based on sketches that the sculptor Bernini made for the Louvre in Paris. There are statues of Spanish kings along the balustrade. The most impressive part of the interior is the grand staircase in the entrance hall. It leads up to the main floor and has a fresco of the triumph of religion and the church on it. The walls of the palace are covered with works of art by Velázquez, Goya, Rubens, El Greco, and Caravaggio, as well as beautiful tapestries from Flanders and France. 5. Wander through the Plaza Mayor During the reign of Philip III in the 17th century, this beautiful plaza was built. It was the center of business and city life, and it was also where important ceremonies like the crowning of a new king and the canonization of saints took place. The square was also the place for bullfights, plays, and tournaments between knights. After a fire in 1790, the corners of the Plaza Mayor were closed off and the nine entrance arches were built to connect it to Calle de Toledo, Calle Mayor, Calle de Postas, and other streets. 6. Puerta del Sol, the heart of the city. The name of the Puerta del Sol comes from the sun symbol on the old city gate that stood here. This large town square faces the sun when it comes up. The kilometer zero point is at the Puerta del Sol. This is where all distances on Spain's national road network are measured. There have been many important historical events at the Puerta del Sol. 
On May 2, 1808, Spain fought back against Napoleon, and in 1931, the Second Republic was declared here. People hang out and have fun in the square these days. The Puerta del Sol is still one of Madrid's busiest squares. It is full of shops and cafes. 7 Museo Nacional Centro de Arte Reina Sofia Queen Sofia opened the Museo Nacional Centro de Arte Reina Sofa in 1986. It is Madrid's modern art center for the avant-garde. The architect Antonio Fernandez Alba designed the sleek, modern building. Parts of it remind us of the Pompidou Center in Paris, like the three glass towers that hold the elevators on the outside of the building. The interesting sculptures in the garden in the inner courtyard are another great surprise for visitors. There are more than 23,000 pieces of art in the collections of the Museo Reina Sofa. The collection is a complete look at modern and contemporary art from Spain. It has works by famous artists like Joan Miró, Pablo Picasso, Salvador Dal, and Alexander Calder. The art is spread out in different rooms in an exhibition space that is 39,000 square meters big. There is a bookstore, a gift shop, and audio guides for visitors. New Bell, a hip cafe restaurant inside the museum, is open for brunch, lunch, afternoon drinks, tapas, and dinner. Evening meals have a lively atmosphere because a DJ plays every night. 8 Fuente de Sabels in Gran Via. The Chibeles Fountain, or Fuente de Sabels, is one of Madrid's most famous landmarks. It is in the middle of a busy intersection. Statues show the Roman goddess Sabel riding a chariot pulled by lions. Francisco Gutierrez and Roberto Michel built the fountain in 1782, and its original purpose was to give people water. Behind the fountain is the Palacio de Sabels, which is home to the Centro Centro Cultural Center. This center has art shows, workshops, conferences, and concerts. The Centro Palacio de Sabels has two restaurants, the Colección Sabels Café and, on the sixth floor, the elegant Restaurante Palacio de Sabels, which has great views of the city. Visitors can also look out over a wide area from the Mirador observation deck on the eighth floor of the building. 9 Temple of Debit An Ancient Egyptian Temple In La Montaña Park, close to the Plaza de España, visitors can discover an ancient Egyptian temple. In 1968, Egypt sent the Temple of Debit to Madrid as a thank you for Spain's help in saving the Abu Simbel temples while the Aswan Dam was being built. The temple was built in the 2nd century BC by King Adika Lamani. It was dedicated to the Egyptian gods Amun and Isis. Inside the temple, you can find original decorations that have been kept in good shape, which is rare for an archaeological site. The monument is surrounded by peaceful gardens with pools and a fountain that create a magical effect. 10 Goya frescoes at Ermita de San Antonio de la Florida. The beautiful frescoes by Francesco Goya that cover the vaults and ceiling of the chapel of the Hermitage of San Antonio de la Florida may be the most important piece of art in Madrid that not many people go to see. The small chapel from the 18th century is on the banks of the Montanares River behind the Royal Palace. On June 13, there is an annual festival in honor of St. Anthony of Padua there, but art lovers come to see the inside. The frescoes are some of Goya's best works. They show scenes from everyday life in Madrid as well as the miracle that St. Anthony did. The frescoes show how Goya's art style was bold and how he used new ways to paint. These paintings were made at a turning point in Goya's career and are thought to be an early form of modern art. In order to protect the frescoes, the chapel has been named a national monument and is no longer used for religious services. Which place on the list is your favorite? Tell us what you think in the comments section below. If you like the video, click the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to get all the latest updates.